Hi guys, Dane here, and welcome to the latest edition of my bookshelf tour. I've lost count of what number I'm on, so without further ado, let's just get started. So, here we have BA Paris Behind Closed Doors. This was actually an uncorrected proof I was sent ahead of publication. Uh, it was pretty good, it was also quite well received, and she's got a few other books now as well. It's basically a thriller, but in this book, the idea is, is that uh, a wife is sort of kept prisoner in her own home because of her abusive husband, and she has to find a way out of it but there's no way to kind of communicate with the outside world or anything like that. And so, uh, yeah, and from the outside, they look like the perfect couple with the perfect marriage. But as as we know, that is not the case. Here we have Measure What Matters by KD pa K yeah, Katie De Delahaye Payne. KD Payne. This is one of the books that I reviewed for a client of mine who pays me to do sort of Sparknote style summaries of business nonfiction books. It was all right. It's probably not the best that I've seen, but it's good if you're looking for a book about metrics and measurement and that kind of thing. Online tools for understanding customers, social media, engagement and key relationships. Then we have Dogtown by Louise Pastore, illustrated by Rainus Petersons. Now, I actually have a fridge magnet uh, that was drawn specifically for me by Rainus Petersons when I met him in Latvia. These are two Latvian authors. This is middle grade. I'm going to read the blurb. I think that's the best way to kind of give you a feel for what it's about. All Jacob wants is for a tall ship to sail down the street, right past his dining room window. But now his wish has got him into big trouble. His dad takes him to stay with his grumpy cousin Mimi and Uncle Eagle on the other side of town. It's going to be a long summer. Then he meets the boss, leader of the Dogtown pack, and everything changes. They need Jacob to help them fight tooth and paw to save their home from the evil Skylar Scraper and safeguard their town forever. Dogtown by Louise Pastore is an adventure story from Riga, the capital of Latvia, where, if you know where to look, the streets are full of dogs who can talk in many languages. Based on local legend, this is a prize-winning story of myths, maps, talking dogs, and summer adventures in the big city. And I actually pre-ordered this uh, just because I really like uh, Rainus Peterson's uh, illustration style. And it was, it was very good. I would totally recommend it if you have kind of a sort of maybe a 10 to 12 year old in your life. Maybe even a bit younger. I mean, there's nothing particularly scary or anything like that in it. And uh, yeah, it was just really well written, well delivered. And of course, I love the illustrations. Here we have The Ice by Laylene Paul. This is an uncorrected proof as well. And it's actually pretty cool considering that fact you know uh so yeah map to follow and all this stuff on there but yeah i enjoyed it as it went it's set in i think antarctica i don't know do we have a blurb in this the arctic sea ice has melted uh so it's set kind of in the future there and it is a bit of a thriller i guess it's an ecological disaster story as well it was all right uh i don't know if i'd necessarily recommend it depends whether the, the cover for the actual version is as cool as this one look yeah, I, I also didn't request that or anything. It was given to me at an event when they gave me like a goodie bag for attending. Here we have Lizzie Phillips, Marvelous Marketing Manual. And um, basically this is like a 54 page booklet on how to market your business. It's quite kind of quirky as you can kind of tell from the cover. There's this big tear in it as well because it's not particularly thick from where it's been kept on my bookcase. But uh, yeah, I think I met this lady back in the day and I, I think she either gave it to me or she sent it to me after meeting me. And it, it was pretty cool. I mean, I don't even know if you can buy it, but uh, I'm, I'm keeping it as part of my collection. Okay, then these two go hand in hand. So we have Urban Dictionary and Mo Urban Dictionary by Aaron Peckham. So if you've ever been on Urban Dictionary, the website, these are basically accompanying books that are little dictionaries that include a bunch of the words that are on there. So Urban Dictionary defines all these kind of street and slang words. And these books kind of collect them together in the form of a, a traditional dictionary. I, I just thought they were quite cool. So I, I couldn't help getting them, you know. Okay, then we have Dawn Pearson, Eigengrau. Uh, it's a collection of poetry demonstrating the intrinsic light in everyday life. I totally don't remember this at all, but I will read you a poem nonetheless. Absinthe. Wormwood and absinthe. Necktie and demon. Bottle and gem. Looking glass and watch. Burrow and cane. Snowflake and toad. Lake and swan. Broken and breaking. Wheel and stone. Grey and blue. Love and sadness. Loving you. There we go. I uh, probably wouldn't recommend it, but I'm, you know, it's still a cool one to have in my collection. Here we have A Child Called It by Dave Peltzer, or Pelzer, I don't know how you pronounce his name. This is basically his memoirs of his abuse at the hands of his mother as a child. Uh, I didn't like it. To be honest, the, my problem with it was that I didn't like the way it was written. And you can't really blame him for that because he's not a writer. He's an abuse victim, you know. But also I have heard a few things from a few other reviewers that kind of cast a lot of what he says into question as well. So whether a lot of it's played up for the purposes of you know, gripping the reader and selling books, I don't know. But uh, yeah, this, this series was super popular a few years back and uh, 
I don't know, I'm glad I called it quits at this one. Here we have White by Sean Pemberton. This is uh, basically a super long sort of experimental poem. This whole thing is one poem, I believe. Uh, it says here, it's an immense feat of close description of an unnamed city during a single day in summer. Uh, this is published by Reality Street, who specialise in publishing poetry. I used to be a Reality Street supporter, which means that uh, my name is in the back of the book just here. I used to pay a certain amount a year and then they send me books for free. I'll read you a short section of this. Uh, Blue rucksack, woman hair, three clips, silver flash sun. Shade under arcade, hung with lamps. Shop window of clothes. Sail, 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 white on red. Girl back, shoulder length blonde, top blue pale. Trousers, green tight buttocks, bare ankles, trainers, white. Strap black of bag diagonal across back right shoulder to hip left curve. Out from shade into sun. Blaze white, man twenties, push asleep, child pram dummy. Bus brown, white at stop. Uh, etc, etc, etc. I mean, it, it's quite impressive that it's like 500 pages of that, but it, it's not the easiest read. As it, Again, it's quite experimental poetry, but it's pretty cool for what it is. Here we have The Search for Myself by Mike Pender. He was one of the searchers. He's actually signed it for me as well. To Dane, best wishes from Mike Pender. Somebody messaged me on Goodreads offering me £20 to buy this from me, not even knowing it was signed. They just wanted a copy of it, I guess. It must be hard to find it. But yeah, bit of rock, rock and roll history there. And uh, very cool. I'm super, super proud that it's a signed copy. All right, then we have Errant Blood by C.F. Peterson. I remember reading this because I remember how cool the copy of the book is. But I honestly don't really remember the story at all. So I'm just going to read you the blurb on this one. Eamon Ansgar has fought in Afghanistan and failed in the city. Now he wants to shut himself away in Dunkel Castle, his childhood home in the Scottish Highlands. But a boy has been murdered in the local village and the people investigating are not the police. The castle is being watched. The local drug dealer wants him dead. And the girl he has tried to forget is still beautiful and living next door. Meanwhile, on the other side of Europe, an illegal immigrant guided by voices and a billionaire scientist on a stolen super yacht are heading in his direction. Eamon is about to find out that the castle walls can't keep out the ghosts of the past and the living that haunt the hills and glens beyond can be far more terrifying. Crime fiction. There we go. Can't recommend it. I guess I probably would actively not recommend it seeing as I don't remember it. But hey ho. Alright, here we have The Life of I by Anita Konst and Rainus Peterson. So I actually mentioned Rainus earlier. He is the Latvian illustrator. And basically the idea behind it is that I is this introverted Latvian author. Their entire campaign is... Uh, about how Latvia is more of an introverted country than other countries, you know? So for example, uh, for example, here he's looking out the window and it's like minus eight degrees Celsius and he's saying uh, below zero equals below average risk of random encounter. So yeah, very cool, would recommend if you can grab it. I think I got it for free at London Book Fair. I think it was in my haul for that. Here we have This Book Loves You by PewDiePie, obviously fellow YouTuber, uh, what, the most subscribed creator at any rate. Uh, it's basically sort of anti, anti-inspirational advice so hide your tears pretend you're okay crying in the shower camouflages them away let's read another page what we got uh if you're reading this it's too late on some toilet paper and some kids walking past just uh, stared at me the duck is coming so uh yeah i mean it's just fun kind of stupid if you like pewdiepie's channel you're probably gonna like his book and uh yeah Check him out. Is he's uh, this is relatively old now, but I like how his, especially in the last year or two, he's really come along and sort of matured as a creator. And I think that's that's cool. It's cool to watch it. Okay, here we have Tom Phillips, a humorment. This is a treated Victorian novel. This is actually quite rare and quite expensive as well. And basically, as you can see, it's uh, concrete poetry from this uh, Victorian novel called A Human Document. And he's literally painted over the entire book and created this super long sort of epic prose poem from it. I'll read you a few poems. Crossed his other image, other image painted, she lied. To take to bed his whole unhappiness like the depths of a dream. The red bays way to hell. Memory mourning beauty chilled. The feeling, the feeling. Command, force, one, fall to war. Arm as if sombre hope has defeated doubt in London. The wording was curt, expect war. The Careless Twelve, the Twelve in Downing Street, postponing excuses. Those are with these images. So yeah, and obviously this is like a map of Britain as well, which I think is cool. And I'm assuming that's supposed to be Europe. I don't know. But yeah, very cool. Would recommend getting this as part of your collection if you, if you can. Okay, then we have Michael Pickering, The Compass Dancers, selected poetry from 1955 to 2015. Uh, I don't really remember this one either, but I will, I will read you some. There is a lot of poetry in this. 
This is the grapes version, written in circa 1959. I once knew a tangerine, knew an orange, knew the Chinese gooseberry, who knew the grape that the fox said was sour, and the grape says it wasn't like that at all. What really happened was this. One day the fox came up and said, you sing very nicely, get down off that tree, and come back and look at the white spot on my tail, and the grape said no. The grape said, the grape says, you can, can, that I ain't a coming down, so the fox canned it and played it over to the robin redbreast, who being a singer would be interested. Well, Robin came hopping along the spaces between the branches, from the space between one branch to the space between the next, and hello, how's he do, kind of style, the grape says. And I was feeling sort of scared, but along came the cunning old fox in the nick of time. He's sour, there ain't gonna be nothing but vinegar off him. So the fox saved my life, and all because of that pretty voice of mine. And it's got like footnotes and stuff, so you can kind of get more of a sense of what the poems are about. Yeah, it's, it's alright, um... Yeah, it's a lot of poetry from one particular author to read, so I don't know, unless you've come across his work, I don't know if you'd necessarily want to pick it up. Though. Here we have Ricky Gervais presents The World of Carl Pilkington. This is basically transcripts and other bits and bobs from uh, the, the, was it the Ricky Gervais show? Uh, yeah, from the podcast there with Carl Pilkington. And so it's got like all of these little cartoons, some kind of conversations and rambles and that kind of stuff. All of the wisdom of Carl Pilkington, who is basically this sort of, idiosyncratic Mancunian with a bald head. Look, there he is with a sticker on it. Yeah. So you're probably not going to like this unless you know and like Carl Pilkington already. But if you do and you like his sense of humour, you will enjoy this. Okay, speaking of Carl Pilkington, we have The Moaning of Life. This is the book that accompanies the TV series. So I've actually read this before watching the series, but I would probably recommend reading the series first because then you'll kind of get more from the stories because they kind of build on what's shown in the TV series. But it's basically like a cross between a travel book and his weird philosophy, I guess. So, like, find out how Carl copes as he has plastic surgery in L.A., models for a Japanese life drawing class, and helps deliver a baby in Bali. So, yeah, again, another one for the Pilkington fans. Here we have Poetry in Emotion, the illustrated words of Scroobius Pip. Scroobius Pip is a musician. He's kind of a sort of a, a rapper, singer, songwriter, I guess. Probably most known for his work with Dan Lassac versus Scroobius Pip. I'll actually link to one of his songs below. Because these are his songs... But then illustrate and, and all by different people. He actually gathered them all through MySpace back in the day. So each song is illustrated by someone else. And so they all have different sort of illustration styles, which makes it really cool. And also they follow like the lyrics of the songs as well. And they also have introductory essays from Pip, which sort of explain, you know, how the song came to be written. So, yeah, very cool. Definitely one for the Scroobius Pip fans. Here we have Ariel by Sylvia Plath. So this is her poetry collection. Uh, everyone knows who Sylvia Plath is, so I'm not going to say who she is. I'm just going to read one of her poems. I am quite a big fan of hers as well, uh, both her poetry and her prose. Even the sun clouds this morning cannot manage such skirts, nor the woman in the ambulance, whose red heart blooms through her coat so astoundingly. A gift, a love gift, utterly unasked for by a sky, palely and flamily igniting its carbon monoxide by eyes dulled to a halt under bowlers. Oh my God, what am I, that these late mouths should cry open in a forest of frost in a dawn of cornflowers? That was Poppies in October. All right, it's another day and I'm back to finish this off. My uh, camera ran out of battery. So let's move on to the next book. That would be, that would be Sylvia Plath's collected poems. So this obviously includes everything in Ariel, Ariel, uh, plus the rest of her stuff. It says it contains all of her mature poetry written from 1956 up to her death in 1963. I'll read you The Detective. This is from the 1st of October, 1962. What was she doing when it blew in over the seven hills, the red furrow, the blue mountain? Was she arranging cups? It is important. Was she at the window listening? In that valley, the train shrieks echo like souls on hooks. That is the valley of death, though the cows thrive. In her garden, the lies were shaking out their moist silks, and the eyes of the killer moving slug-like and sidelong, unable to face the fingers, those egotists. The fingers were tamping a woman into a wall, a body into a pipe, and the smoke rising. This is the smell of years burning here in the kitchen. These are the deceits, tacked up like family photographs. And this is a man. Look at his smile. The death weapon. No, no one is dead. There is no body in the house at all. There is the smell of polish. There are plush carpets. There is the sunlight playing its blades, bored hoodlum in a red room, where the wireless talks to itself like an elderly relative. Did it come like an arrow? Did it come like a knife? Which of the poisons is it? Which of the nerve curlers, the convulsors? Did it electrify? This is a case without a body. The body does not come into it at all. 
It is a case of vaporization, the mouth first, its absence reported in the second year. It had been insatiable and in punishment was hung out like brown fruit to wrinkle and dry. The breasts next. These were harder, two white stones. The milk came yellow, then blue and sweet as water. There was no absence of lips, there were two children, but their bones showed and the moon smiled. Then the dry wood, the gates, the brown motherly furrows, the whole estate. We walk on air, Watson. There is only the moon embalmed in phosphorus. There is only a crow in a tree. Make notes. Damn, that was awesome. So, yeah, Sylvia Plath. Um, I, don't, I don't know, I like her uh, prose as well. I mean, here's The Bell Jar. I read this fairly recently, actually, and it's one of my top books of the court and would definitely recommend this. But I really love her poetry as well. I, I don't think I can choose between poetry and prose when it comes to Plath. Um, just definitely recommend her. Check her out. All right, then here we have Edgar Allan Poe's selected tales. So we've got things like The Fall of the House of Usher, which was kind of credited as being the first detective story. Uh, the, mur the Murders in the Rue Morgue, rather. That is the first detective story, my bad. Uh, what else have we got? The Telltale Heart, obviously. Uh, the Cask of Amontillado. The Domain of Arnheim. Yeah, plenty of stories. In Fucking hell. Jesus. Plenty of stories in this one. Uh, the print isn't like, it's pretty tiny, so this would be one that I, I would read as a, a bedtime book, but you know, Edgar Allan Poe, you can't go wrong. And then on top of that, I also have The Raven and other favorite poems. So like, I'll read you an Edgar Allan Poe poem that isn't The Raven, because also The Raven is super long. Let's do a dream. In visions of the dark night, I have dreamed of joy departed, but a waking dream of life and light hath left me broken hearted. Ah, what is not a dream by day to him whose eyes are cast? On things around him with a ray turned back upon the past. That holy dream, that holy dream, while all the world were chiding, Hath cheered me as a lovely beam, a lonely spirit guiding. What though that light through storm and night so trembled from afar, What could there be more purely bright and truth's day star? So there we go, Edgar Allan Poe. And that was an Edgar Allan poem. This is No Apology Anthology, which says, Contains working class intellect. Um... This is by the Poets on the Hill group, that's why it comes here. Uh, let's read you one of the poems. Uh, there's like little illustrations and stuff in it and some photographs. Let's read The Lantern Parade. Uh, this is by Dawn. Here is Dawn, here is a drawing with, of Dawn with a pint. The night was cold and still. A haloed moon shouldered the sky's dark mantle. An Earth's sister star drew close as the caterpillar crawl of dancing firefly light ascended the giggling hill. Three choirs sang childishly in the encircling church at the top of the world, and Christmas was revived, a community present for our children gathering in a festival of light. There we go. I think I mostly got this just because it's kind of quirky, and it is quite cool if you want like a quirky little poetry collection by working class poets. There we go. Here we have PowerPoint and Coffee, My Life and Marketing by Michael Pollack. This is by Austin Macaulay Publishing. Um, they did actually offer to publish one of my books, which is kind of like a payers like a, a, a publisher where you pay them to publish it basically so I kind of said no but um yeah I mean the formatting and layout and stuff's all right but I didn't I wasn't particularly interested by this to be honest I gave it quite a low rating at the time um uh, but I thought it might be interesting because I obviously worked in marketing as well but alas not not really my kind of thing here we have Tangerine Sky edited by Terence Portelli and this is poems from Malta I actually picked this up from the Malta stand at uh um London Book Fair Mind blank there. He likes his long poems, this guy. All right. Turning their back. Likely one's gaze is doused in the dark to search for hands to hold and hearts to beat as one. Likely one's mind weighs not but still can see and fathom coils dreamt up by those who lead. Likely they drown not in waves of inward swim but on the shores of indifference. Likely they think night's tears are drizzle on them, knowing not to dream once more of a shipwreck. These sails will not redeem the enslaved souls of other lands unmindful of their kin. No voyage this, bringing comfort and joy to strike one's mind with a hint of escape. This land's unable to bear illegals, for it spends its wealth on coloured fireworks. Night of death, better dead on arrival. Tearless the island's children mourn their loss. They strike no pose in the morrow's tabloids. Their floating, bloated carcasses, burnt, flayed, butchered by scorching sun that shines on crowds, run mad on ritual that has come to please. I think I gave this like 3.75 out of 5 actually, it was quite a good little collection. 
Here we have a Blueprint for Revolution by Serja Popovich and Matthew Miller. I actually reviewed this in full recently, so I'll link to that below. Uh, this was given to me by my girlfriend. She actually, I think she saw a speech by the guy and then got his book, uh, got two copies. So we had a copy each and we both read it. And basically, so the subtitle is How to Use Rice Pudding, Lego Men and Other Nonviolent Techniques to Galvanize Communities, Overthrow Dictators or Simply Change the World. So this is basically non-fiction about how to have your own revolution. And there were some really cool ideas in it. My main problem with it was that it felt as though each of the chapters was almost like a long blog post or something and they'd been kind of wedged together without an overall narrative to bring them all together, you know? But that can be quite hard to do with non-fiction books, so I guess it's forgivable. And the information itself was pretty interesting. It could maybe have been a bit shorter, but that's about it. Here we have Ezra Pound's Selected Poems, 1908 to 1969. Now, Pound wasn't the greatest of guys. I mean, uh, I believe he was a, a, a Nazi for a while. Uh, <laughs> But uh, he could write, you know, and he's a very influential poet as well. So I'm just trying to find a shortish poem now to read to you. He's quite, quite an experimental poet. I'll read you this one because it's about Walt Whitman. A pact. I make a pact with you, Walt Whitman. I've detested you long enough. I come to you as a grown child who has had a pig-headed father. I'm old enough now to make friends. It was you that broke the new wood. Now is the time for carving. We have one sap and one root. Let there be commerce between us. I thought that was quite cool because I'm not a particular Whitman fan. I mean, I kind of appreciate Whitman. Uh, we'll get to him on the bookcase tour, but uh, he's not hes not my favourite poet. And finally, here we have Why Does My Cat Squeeze Into Boxes by uh, Michael Powell. And yeah, I mean, this is like questions about why cats do different things like attacking my ankles, uh, landing on their feet, licking plastic bags. Going crazy and tearing around the house, that's known as the zoomies. Biggie does it when he's had a poo. So uh, yeah, I mean, it's quite a cute little book. It'd be quite a good little like gift book or like a coffee table book or something like that. And it was all right. So yeah, that brings us to the end of this bookshelf tour. Next would be my Terry Pratchett collection, but I actually previously did a video of that, so I'll link to that below as well. And in like my bookshelf tour playlist, that's effectively the next episode. And then in my next video, kind of, chronologically or whatever uh, will be pulling up after Pratch uh, after Terry Pratchett so we'll go through like Philip Pullman and stuff so that's very exciting so as always thanks a lot for watching don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so what you thought of them hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video hit subscribe for more and I'll see you soon for another bookish video thanks a lot bye bye I've just realized that anybody watching this video with like a Google home around I probably just stopped the, them from watching the video by telling Google to stop. That was a bit of a mistake. Oops.